Hi, I'm Shane. Hey, I'm Cohen. And today we're doing a presentation on Terry's Minor for Human Gross Anatomy 233. And we came up with two hypotheses. Our first hypothesis during the cocking phase of the throwing motion is of the Terry's Minor. And as it works concentrically, it's going to laterally rotate the humerus and pull the humerus posteriorly. So we made a hypothesis that the greater we can pull that, arm, or that humerus posteriorly gives us a greater potential for forward motion. Now our second hypothesis is that as we work eccentrically with the teres major, the less of a response we can have to that muscle spindle and to the stretch, the greater we're going to allow for acceleration through a lack of deceleration. Now, as we see here on Kome, we're going to take a greater look at the teres minor itself. As we see here, we have our scapula, our humerus, and our teres minor. And our proximal attachment starts at the medial aspect of the lateral border of the scapula. Then, we see our distal attachment is to the inferior facet of the greater tubercle of the humerus. Now, as this muscle works concentrically, it's going to laterally rotate the humerus and pull the humerus posteriorly. Now, as it works in a forward throwing motion, it's going to be put on stretch in an eccentric contraction. Therefore, it's going to control the acceleration through deceleration. And, of course, through this whole thing, and acting with the other rotator cuff muscles, it's going to hold and maintain compression on the humeral head within the glenoid cavity. And as we learned in one of our studies, the greater ability of this to hold the humeral head into a, into a fixed position, a fixed axial point, is going to allow for greater range of motion and greater function of the throwing motion. Now, to test our hypothesis, we're going to look more at the cocking phase of the throwing motion. As we said, the muscle works concentrically to laterally rotate the humerus and pull the humerus posteriorly. Well, the main mechanism for this motion is the Golgi tendon organ. And the Golgi tendon organ responds to the, the force applied on a muscle. So as we concentrically contract and laterally rotate the humerus and pull this arm back, we're applying greater force on this muscle. Now, if we can decrease the, the, the responsiveness of the Golgi tendon organ and to allow more force to be applied, therefore pulling this arm greater, to a greater extent back, we're going to allow for more motion forward. Now, for you biomechanics students, let's look at a position here compared to a position here. If we only pull back to a position here, our impulse, our force over a period of time is going to be lessened. Compared to a position here, we're going to be able to apply a force for a greater amount of time because we're traveling a greater distance. So as we saw in that biomechanic lab, as we increase our impulse, we increase our distance and force, therefore our maximal distance thrown and applied to the ball. Now let's... Now, if we look at a slingshot example, a halfway cocked position is not going to apply as much force and acceleration as a maximally cocked position. This correlates directly, again, with the position of the humerus in the cocking position. If we have a not so much cocked position compared to a fully cocked position, this is going to allow for more force to be generated to the ball compared to this kind of a position. And now, let's explore this Golgi tendon organ a little further. As we apply this amount of force, the Golgi tendon organ, you know, it isn't responding as hard as it would to this position. So through training and through practice of this throwing motion, we allow the Golgi tendon organ to respond a little bit less to this position. And as we respond a little bit less, our potential and range of motion gets larger and we're allowed to apply more force on the ball. And now, we also got to think, through training, we learn to use this kinetic chain of motion, which also allows for greater range of motion on the ball. But with our discussion of the Terry's minor, 
This little change to the Golgi tendon organ can cause a big change in our overall acceleration applied to the ball. Now we're going to explore our second hypothesis, which involves more of the forward throwing motion. So as we said, we're at this maximum cock position, but now we're worried about the Terry's minor and its role in the forward motion. As we said, this muscle is now working eccentrically to control the acceleration through deceleration. Now the main mechanism responsible for this aspect is the muscle spindle. And we referred to this back in our video of the flexor hallucis longus and how the muscle spindle responds to a stretch put on this muscle. Well, as we move from our cocked position to our throwing position, we are stretching this muscle. And it's controlling our motion forward. The muscle spindle is saying, we cannot go through with this full acceleration without decelerating in some aspect and controlling this motion. So therefore, our ability to greater accelerate is directly related to our muscle, respo our muscle spindle's response to this action. If we can decrease our muscle spindle's response to this action, increasing flexibility and laxicity of the teres minor, we will be able to apply more acceleration to the ball. Now this goes, as you see pitchers doing a lot of stretching exercises, particularly focusing on the posterior muscle of the shoulder, and the teres minor being one of them. Because if these muscles are more lax, they're going to allow for more range of motion forward, and a less inhibition to acceleration. So if we can reduce the amount of inhibition to acceleration, we produce more acceleration. Alright, now let's make a general synopsis of, of all this you know, info that we've thrown at you. Impulse, acceleration, force, velocity. Those are the things we need to improve to improve our performance as a pitcher, a quarterback, wherever throwing is important. So first we talked about impulse. The amount of time that we can apply a force onto this ball is going to generate greater acceleration greater outcome. Now, as we decrease the inhibition of deceleration, we increase acceleration. Now, if we look at the formula for force, mass times acceleration, well, the mass of the ball is not changing. It's a constant mass. So, therefore, the only thing that we can do to change our force applied is provide more acceleration. And the way that we can improve this is through a lack of deceleration of the teres minor in its eccentric phase and its response to the muscle spindle. So if we increase acceleration, the distance that this ball is traveling, 60 feet 6 inches in a professional baseball diamond, is going to predict our velocity. Increasing acceleration over this constant distance is increasing velocity. Therefore, decreasing the amount of deceleration of the teres minor is the main point that we have to focus on in increasing our performance as a pitcher and throwing. 